Hey guys, Michael Besson, Christian.com. Welcome to uh, one of our most cherished and honored guests, Dr. Jim Richards, for this session of LifeCast. Hey, let me tell you something. Jim Richards is affecting the world in ways that very, very few people are. And I know that he doesn't like to be talked about like this, but I sure like talking about him because he's really one of the people that has mentored my life the most. And so if you want to experience God at an extraordinarily new level, and oh, by the way, tackle some really big myths. In this session, we did some really cool journeying in quantum physics and how it affects our lives. The words that we speak literally become life themselves. And also some Christian myths. I mean, hmm, is God really in charge? A whole lot of believers and a whole lot of non-believers believe that he is, but they could not be more wrong because in God's word, it's very clear that he's not. What, is that? what do I mean by that? You need to listen, you need to watch, you need to share this with your friends because it is one special episode of a very reoccurring guest here at Christian.com. So without further ado, join me in this special LifeCast session with Dr. Jim Richards. Hey, Michael Besson here from Christian.com. It is a, it's that time. It's that time for the next LifeCast. And what we hope will be a long, long-term relationship with uh, somebody that we hope to have as a frequent guest for years to come, my mentor, my friend, uh, a gentleman that is impacting the world in an amazing way, Dr. Jim Richards. Man, I don't, like I say, I don't know if I can ever live up to those kinds of introductions, with I, but uh, we're going to have fun doing whatever we do today. Anyhow, and it's going to help people. Yes, it is, sir. Yes, it is. And you know, I was, I have been totally stoked about uh, hanging out with you today because uh, I had a little trouble sleeping the last couple of nights, but about two or three nights ago, I just got all kinds of ideas for us that I wanted to explore because I'm fascinated by how you just show up in life. I'm fascinated by, and I, I really don't know that it is the three PhD background, which is always an interesting. No, no, that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> or just that you just, you've got a, such a curious mind. And I suspect you've had that your whole life. And I think that's where a lot of these nuggets came from. So uh, last night, I, I'm going to start with this. Last night I'm watching, uh, I'm, whenever I immerse myself in something new, whether it's a business vertical, I don't know anything about it and it's new consulting clients, I, I really go as deep as I possibly can. So last night, couldn't sleep. I ended up watching uh, Mike Rowe and Ben Shapiro on a, an hour and a half long podcast. And I think Mike Rowe is an incredibly fascinating guy. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I'm sort of drawing a, a foundation from which I think people need to understand the current climate with which we operate on a daily basis here and in life in, in 2019. So uh, Mike Rowe, who's neither a liberal or a conservative, he goes on uh, Glenn Beck early in the day. By the way, he has 3 million Facebook followers when he goes on Glenn Beck. Then later in the day, uh, he went on um, Bill Maher's uh, show, which is, is about as liberal as you can possibly get. He woke up the next day and he lost 1 million followers. And it, it, it caused me to think about how people are so entrenched in a particular viewpoint, opinion, nobody wants to discuss anything anymore. And the conversation went on to say, you know, three years ago, four years ago, they could go to campuses and there was pushback. And remember, these are not two conservatives. These are broad spectrum yep. guys, one of them anyway. And, uh, and now it's just like they have to have guards, they have to have protection, they have to have security. They got to they gotta, uh, go in a couple hours before and do bomb sweep. It's nuts. So my question to you is, what's going on in the world today? Why are we so divided? <laughs> I just like to, by the way, we didn't plan this. I'm just throwing bombs at you. <laughs> Speaking of bombs. You know, um, one of the interesting biblical prophecies about the times that we live in is basically the polarization mm -hmm. of, of the world population. And, the, you know, the, the, the polarization is coming about uh, – if, if, if you really want to look at it from a from a from a biblical point of view, the polarization is coming about because the ultimate 
initiatives that started literally in heaven when Lucifer attempted to overthrow God and then came to planet Earth to overthrow man has, has been one thing. Uh, let's throw off all of these morals, standards, and values that, that God says will bring you a good life because the real truth is that's just bondage. And so any person that has any morals, values, and standards, even if they're not a Christian or a Jew, even if they have no biblical belief, if those morals, values, and standards are in harmony with anything God's word has ever said, then the other side is totally polarized against that and believes it should be totally wiped from the face of the earth. Mm. You know, it's an interesting thought because it just seems as though it's increased the temperature of the conflict. And I think that we used to be able to have, I don't know, dialogue between two parties, if you will. And I, I, we don't care about the right and the left in this program, but just the, the ability to sit down and rationally reason together seems like it's out the door. And I, I'm just wondering like what's going on? How it, can we as believers share truth in love, <laughs> communicate with people, because I think we're going to blow a lot of people's minds with their paradigm shifts here today, uh, and do it in a way where people can kind of receive it. I don't even know if there's a way to do that yeah. anymore. Well, there, there's two things in what you've said. No, number one, you want to realize something. Uh, rational dialogue only occurs between two pe- two or more people that are, that are seeking legitimate answers. Mm. And in the absence of people seeking legitimate answers, you have people only trying to prove their point, only trying to prove that they're right. So there is no dialogue between, uh, in a group, if both people aren't legitimately seeking these answers. Mm-hmm. Now, interestingly, and, and if you want to know the truth, and I, I'm going to say some things, probably how I'm sensing this is going to go. I'm going to say some things that can be really taken out of context, very much misunderstood, or, or even sound incredibly negative. Uh, it's not, it's just factual information. And that is this, you know, uh, the kingdom of God is not in, is not in talk. Mm-hmm. Now, most of, of what people who have any type of godly beliefs, you know, spiritual beliefs, biblical beliefs, uh, basically their approach to influencing the world is talk and right. talk talk doesn't really get you anywhere what what people will remember after any experience that you've had with them is basically how you treated them how you made them feel how do you make them feel yep. and so and so you know uh we have actually violated everything pretty much that jesus came to show us because he, he, what he did is he said, look, all this legalism, all this religious junk that you guys did with the commandments, all, you've used that to judge other people. Yep. You've used that to oppress other people. You've used that to give yourself power over other people. And the real truth is all of that is really just telling you how to walk in love toward other people. In yeah. other words, if you want to be like God, then then you don't hurt them. You don't wrong them. You don't steal from them. You know, you don't. You don't mess with their wife. You don't, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. You don't lie about them. You don't gossip. You don't sign up. And instead of taking that and saying, I need to take this and learn how to treat people, it was taken and said two things. I will use this to judge other people, and I will use this to try to earn something from God. And he wasn't offering us a chance to earn anything, you know. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, Jesus comes on the scene and he's the word made flesh. In other words, uh, he's saying, and I'm not going to go through all of the language and theology on this, but basically he's saying, look, you made a total mess out of everything God said because you totally changed and twisted the intentions behind those words. Mm. So I'm going to show you what this would look like if you were living this or doing this from God's intention. And then in my teachings, I'm going to help you understand God's teachings. And so, you know, one of the most important things I think that Jesus ever said about understanding God is this, is that, is that 
all the law and all the prophets. In other words, anything God has ever said, he says, you have to hang it on this. Love God with all your heart, love your neighbor, and love yourself. And if, the, if what you're saying, the way you're saying it, the way you're treating people does not inspire them to love God, if it does not inspire a, a sense of value that you're that you're giving to them, then the real truth is you may be saying the right words, but you have lost God's intention. And so I don't really meet many people that their intention in ministry or their intention is in witnessing is I, I want to make sure you feel loved. I want to make sure you feel valuable because that's, that's what that Greek word for love is all about feeling valuable. I want to make sure you know that you're valuable to God. You, know, you may be a scumbag, but you're still valuable to God. Yeah. And and you know what? Really, on some level, you're valuable to me just because you're valuable to God, you know? Yeah, amen. You know, and it's if if more of us were walking with that intention, and it's, you know, it's easy to speak. Uh, it's another thing, and I live in a pretty complex business client world, and uh, there's a current uh, uh, bit of a conflict with one of them. And, 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 and it's interesting how you almost wired as humans to come back and bark louder. And I, I just stopped yeah. myself right in the, my tracks and said, are you meeting this adversity with love? Yeah. Really, Michael, are you? Because, uh, and there's something else to be said. Like if, if you had a legitimate cause and you asked me for a billion dollars and I wanted to give it to you, and by the way, I would if I had it and you had a legitimate cause, I couldn't give it if I didn't possess it. Oh, exactly. And I feel too often we as believers walk around, our love bucket is empty. We haven't been spending time with God intimately at a heart level with God. And so when I get pricked by, I call it life data, when life data comes at me, it hits me hard. What's inside is what yeah. shows up. <laughs> And yeah, when you, when you squeeze a sponge, the only thing come out is what's in it. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about, uh, I used to, when I speak at seminars, I'd, I'd always uh, reference uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen, the gospel of Bruce Springsteen. Everybody has a hungry heart. That's actually biblical. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. we soak up everything that we're around and guard it beyond measure, right? And I, and I almost want to go down that rabbit hole, but I want to say one, I, I learned something a while back from you. And, and it was just like always, you, you give me the original language meeting, and I go, no way, no way. The, in the latter days, uh, and this is just spontaneous, I didn't look it up, so I probably can quote this exactly right, but there'll be kingdom rising against kingdom, and I always thought that was nation against nation. And, and then I heard some original language interpretation from you that's actually like a spirit of division against a spirit of division. Do I have that right? Because it seems like I see it everywhere. Well, you know what's really interesting and the strictest understanding of that is really culture against culture. Mm. Mm. And, and, and that's what you see all over the world today. You see, you see every group standing up and saying, our culture is, is right. And if you don't agree, agree that we're superior or if you don't agree that we're right, then you are evil and we will fight against you because, and it doesn't matter if it's religious groups. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's racial groups. It doesn't matter if it's political groups. Uh, you know, groups are standing up and saying our culture, our view on the world, our take on how life should be lived is the only one that should be tolerated. Oh man. You know, and th that nails it on the head. And I think there's an epidemic uh, breaking out worldwide. And I'm actually doing some research on this. And I can't wait to share it with you, but, how social media and technology is, is, is affecting us. And I know everybody knows the cliche that we're, we're communicating more than ever before, but we're losing our ability to communicate in real life, right? And people are saying things and expressing things, and I'm in this bucket, uh, online that they would never uh, say in person. And, and, and what the research is showing is after you do this for a year, three, five, six, whatever, how long social media has really been playing a role in society, we're becoming uh, calloused towards oh, yeah. just sharing our opinion and just being hate filled. And, and now it's manifesting into, you know, mobs and streets and, mm -hmm. you know, conflict in neighborhoods with thugs and gangs. And, and you just look at this and you go, man, there's a, there's a culture difference between, and forget about politics, it's good and evil at a level. Oh, that it is good I and evil. I don't think I've ever seen before, you know? But you know, our, but our problem is kind of in our definition of good and evil, good becomes religious self-righteousness 
and evil, you know, is is kind of tone twisted just to uh, just to moral perversion. Mm. And the real truth is, you, you know, the word for evil has more to do with chaos than mm. it does specifically with whatever ungodly thing that that people are doing. Now, you know, take what Jesus said about love, and and Israel said, you know, the most important commandment was. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and also all your mind. You know, because the Lord our God is one God. So you start looking at the the true emphasis that God had placed on love, and you start realizing then that that you know one of the prophecies of the end time, the way you identify it, is because of the absence of love, people's hearts grow cold. Mm. And so, if love is value, and a person is saying, "I I, I have no value for you." unless you agree with me. I have no value for you unless you make me feel safe in my political position and my cultural position or, or, or whatever. So, so what we really have and what is happening is just there is a uh, uh, there is people are starving to death in the absence of love. And mm. see, the Bible says love has good manners. So, you know, it is not good manners. To, to bash on people. It is not good manners to pass judgments about people. It is not good manners to be rude and do these things that people are doing online. So really, all that's really happening is that is that people's hearts are growing cold because uh, there's a love epidemic. Boy, that just stabbed me in the heart. I got all kinds of stuff to work on in that category of life. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't really need to work on it. What I need to do is just... Uh, Present it to the Lord and say, I don't want this. I'm repenting. Yeah. I'm changing my mind yeah. that I don't want to reflect you like this. Help me. You know, it's not really that yeah. complicated. It's really, truly not. Now, all of this was wait, sort wait, of. Wait a minute. Let, let me so, uh, hold your question. Hold your question because I want to say something about that. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> you know what? One of the number one doctrines that the millennial church is rejecting today uh... repentance. Oh, that's right. Right. And and they have this theological twist on why they're rejecting it, which their theology is just so off the map. Yeah, I think it's tied to a false but, grace or something. Well, it's it, it, well, it's tied to a whole yeah. lot of yeah, yeah. religious junk that they that they have woven together, and and so their doctrine of rejecting what they're going to reject is more based on stuff that's not in the Bible. It may have biblical terminology, but it's not in the Bible. Repent, real repentance is in the Bible. Now, what religion has called repentance mm. is not in the Bible. But, but anyhow, they're throwing out the Bible version. They're throwing out the religious version. It's, it all, all repentance is bad. So now all repentance is is to have a change of mind. Jeez. That's it. So, and you know, it, you know I, uh, my latest book called Heaven on Earth, and see, people don't understand, Jesus came teaching about the kingdom of heaven. In other words, I'm going to show you how to have heaven on earth and, that, and and he he took everything god ever said and put it in a context that's right and that was the context this is how to have heaven on earth now we want heaven on earth but here's what we don't want we don't want to have to change our point of view about anything hmm. and so in and understanding and jesus was real clear about who would it be willing to accept his teaching about how to have heaven on earth, it all starts with people who are repentant, which means they're teachable. So this culture that we are in now, the one earmark of this culture that makes everybody fight for their opinion is, is protecting their ego, which means I can never be wrong. I can never admit That's I right. have to change my That's mind. Right. That's you know, right. I just sat down a few minutes ago and, and watch these newscasters uh, who, who, you know, Three days ago, you know, four days ago, they said something that, that was completely wrong. It didn't happen. The next day, they changed their story, and now they have a version, another version that is completely wrong, never happens. The next day, they have another version that's completely wrong that never happens. And this just goes on day after day. But there's never a day that they that they, that they they stand up and say, you know what? We, we were wrong. <laughs> we were wrong. Yeah. You because know, that... it's all about being right. Not only just being right, but such an epidemic of deception. I just see everything is so deceiving. In fact, if you really want to know what's going on in the world today, good luck with that. Because you're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to do some research. You're going to have to seek. 
I'll watch both spectrums and then I'll get viewpoints and opinions. I'll actually, and I go, oh, now I know what's going on. But all right. So here's where I was trying to get headed. And, and that's what I love about these sessions, man. They're just, they need to be organic. They, go they, need, to, they need to touch people. And you kind of dig and you find a little nugget and you pull it out and you go, wow, I bet you this will change the world. And that's what I want to have happen here. I want millions of people yep. someday to hear this and have a radically different experience with God. And and so that's kind of the premise that I think. I think there are too many people who have false viewpoints, opinions, images of God. And if they truly knew who he was, that he's chasing them to bless them and, and heal them from the inside out and renew their relationships and, and, and restore finances. I mean, if you, tr- if you truly knew God like that, it'd be much more... Uh, interesting of a world it would be a much more loving world and people would be much more in touch with god but they don't know that god they know a lot of them so what i wanted to to say is that that which we need the most we resist the greatest and so in in executive consulting the hardest thing is to shift executives viewpoints opinions how they see their business how they see their marketplace not the strategies methods and tactics that stuff's the easy stuff shifting their things and that's what i'm trying to maybe open up the door with here so I thought about some of the biggest areas, that, and I wrote this down in the middle of the night, uh, that I think the world has a very, and a lot of the church, has a very distorted view of what God really is. So here's a question for you. I mean, God's in control. Look what's happening well, in the world. There's chaos. Uh, wait a minute. Do you, do you want a scripture for that thing that you just shared? Absolutely. Because, see, in Isaiah 52, the prophet speaks and... and, and uh, is asking the question, why do people, why are they taken captive for no reason when they don't need to be? There's no reason they should be taken. Why do people go into captivity? Why do people end up in, in bondage? And uh, and as he, as he kind of continues this conversation between himself and God, he God says, it's because of your leaders. Mm. And he says, and he said, because of your leaders, my name is blasphemed. 24 hours a day because I, he, this scripture doesn't say this, but basically he said, I get blamed for every bad thing that's happening. But then he goes on to say, but a day will come when they will uh, see me as I am. And when they see me as I am, they will say, uh, blessed are the feet, you know, who, who share and carry the gospel of peace. That there is peace between God and man. This this religious view of God that has been twisted and imposed upon us by religious leaders. Some of them thinking they're doing us a service, but basically not accepting God's testimony of Himself. And that, and, and then Isaiah fifty three starts with, "Okay, whose testimony are you going to believe?" Mm. And then He tells what He does on the cross. And then Isaiah fifty four says, "And through this." He established a covenant of peace. Mm, mm. And we have the opportunity to be in this covenant of peace where, whereby we have always have peace with God through the Lord Jesus. But religion does not believe that. Yeah, and and they the, preach an angry God. For those people that uh, never read the Bible or maybe new to the Bible, that, by the way, he's quoting a book from the Old Testament in thousands of years before Christ was on the cross. And, yep. and, and he already spoke what was about to happen. It's such a beautiful love story uh, yeah. for God to reconcile mankind unto himself. And all we got to do is understand it. So let's do that. So, you know, if God's in control, <laughs> why does Las Vegas exist? <laughs> if, God, <laughs> if God's in control, why is all this bad stuff happening? Why is all this evil? Why is all this lying? Why is all this deception why are, you know, children being molested and sex trafficking as an epidemic? Why, if God is in control? You must have an answer for that, right? <laughs> Here, this is the most destructive, deceptive, religious lie ever spoken. It causes more people to hate God. It causes more people to be bitter. It causes more people to dis- destroy their faith, even when they're trying to walk with God. And it's this. The Bible never said God was in control. Mm, that's right. Except in the beginning. And when God created the, the earth, he put man here as a delegated authority and said, now you have dominion. You go over to Psalm 8 and he says, 
you know, he says that, uh, he said, you, you know, basically you have authority over all of the works of my hands. Goes over in Psalms 80 or 82 and he says, or, or Psalm 115, he says, look, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth belongs to man. Mm-hmm. And it goes over to, like, I believe it's Psalm 82, where he says, where he's, where he talks to man. And basically he says, you're the gods. And, and there he's talking about the, the word is not meaning we're God like him. But basically he says, you could judge rightly and honestly and establish justice in the earth, but you don't. Mm-hmm. And, and he said, because you won't do what I gave you the authority to do. He says, all of the foundations are out of sorts. So the earth, and you know, here's what's incredible. Science is slowly catching up with the Bible. Yeah, amen. Boy, that's exciting. You know, and uh, and we're going to dive dive into that. I got follow-ups. Oh, yeah. In 1927, Max Planck was receiving a a Nobel Peace Prize in quantum physics. And and in his acceptance speech, he made the statement that uh, that man is not observing the universe. Man is in interplay with the universe, and the universe is becoming what man believes, perceives, and desires for it to become. Now, I, See, I, 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 want, I want to make sure the audience heard yeah. that. That's not a theory, right? And if I understand as uh, uh, quantum physics and mechanics uh, advanced, it's actually not a theory. It's a proven oh, it's scientific principle that's just as real as, as anything else. Am I, do I understand that correctly? You're exactly right. See, one of the reasons, for example, we can't create cold fusion the way it should work is because at the subatomic world, how energy acts is based on the person that's viewing it. Mm -hmm. And so there are subatomic experiments that can be done that if one person views it, it works. If another person views it, it doesn't work. Yeah, and so they they have no way to harness that or to manage that if it's dependent upon the view of of the observer. Well, see, God God said, "Look, now I'm giving you authority." And so yep. basically, he he said, "Now I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to give you all the wisdom that you're going to need to do this." But it's it is always going to be your choice because. If I'm creating you in my likeness and image, I can never impose my will upon you. That's right. And if I'm a God of love, I can't oppress you by forcing you to do what you don't want to do. So man has been given freedom and he's been given instruction, but by and large, he has chosen to not rule the world based on God's morals, values, and ethics. Man. And when you look around the world and you look at the manifestation of the way people think, and I've traveled all, I've been blessed to travel all over the world. I know you, you've even more than me probably. But one of the things that I quickly became aware of, and I think it has to do with the Holy Spirit living inside of you and a discernment of spirits or something, you can get off a plane in Japan and there's just a, there's, I know Christians don't like, there's a vibe. Different. There's a vibe. Mm-hmm. You get off, go to Alabama where you live. There's a, there's a feeling. You go to uh, Seattle, Washington, get off the plane. You feel it. It's just a different thing. It, it, are you saying that the collective way people are thinking is actually affecting that culture and thus the fallen world gets a license to almost uh, do things? I, 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 let me say it this way. I, I, and I've said this a lot of times in seminars. I, I'll be on a beach with somebody. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm laying on the sun and I'm getting a great suntan. And the person next to me, hey, I love your tan. I want to get a tan. I say, okay, well, you got an umbrella over you. Think got, got to remove it. Oh, I, I get the umbrella. And I understand that part. I do. But, but I want to get your tan. Uh, well, you know, you got to move the umbrella. There's, there's, there's a thing you have to do. By the way, the sun frequencies are coming. There's no stopping it. It's going to happen. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I thought this was on Do Not Disturb. I'm trying to do my notes and it comes off. The, um, the frequencies, the sun, the sun rays are already there. You don't right. have to create them. And, and the point right. I'm getting to before the distraction was, I think that's how the consequences of a fallen world take place. D- am I nailing that? Or am I close to that? You know, I think you are because, see, religion presents this idea that God doesn't really want to do anything for us. He's angry at us. And so we have to find way. And all of this, by the way, is based on pagan, pagan religions. And mm-hmm. uh, in other words, uh, paganism infiltrated Judaism and, and, and modern Christianity. And so the idea is we're going to this angry God to try to appease him and try to come up with some way to get him to do things 
that will help us when the truth is, it's just like you're saying, the sun is already shining, the rays are already there. There's really not anything left for God to do. It, all that needs to happen is for us to harmonize ourselves with what actually works. Yes. Amen. Now, that's big. Uh, and I, before I jump on to the next thing that I really want to shed some light on with you, uh, we live in a fallen world. There's, there's tragedy all around us. What as believers do we do to harmonize? What specifically should I be doing day to day now that I have the power of the living God living inside of me, not some make-believe, wannabe religion? Like, we can't escape this thing. No. How do I harmonize my life in a way where I'm blessed, protected, prospering, you know, the whole thing, being healed? Mm -hmm. What do I do? How do I do? How does the individual believer no. access that? Well, see, we have accepted the pagan humanistic concept uh, that is th that the world has to change for our life to work. Mm -hmm. And so, so all the emphasis then is on getting other people to do what they're supposed to so we can create this environment where, where things work for us. But when Jesus came teaching about the kingdom of heaven, there was a couple of interesting things that he, that he told us. For, for, first thing is, and, and, and some versions of the Bible translations say it this way, but the, the original language says it very clearly. Jesus said, there's really only one reason people close their ears. In other words, to not hear what God is saying, you have, you have to close your ears. It's not a matter of God speaking and you got to kind of crawl through the, jump through the religious hoop so you can hear him. You have to close your ears not to hear. Him. So yeah. he says, there's a reason people close their ears so they can't hear God, close their eyes so they can't perceive reality, and they harden their hearts so they don't have any sensitivity mm. at all. And he says, there's one reason, he says, but it won't change. So if I don't want to change, I have to create a, a, a worldview, you know, a, a personal philosophy that everybody else has to change for me to be happy. Boy, and oh boy. so <laughs> that's how most Christians think and, and live. That's how the whole world thinks and lives, mm, by and large. Mm, you know. But now, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, no, I no, no, I, 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 I just realized that you, you, you're tying it into, as far as I know, I always wanted to ask you about the principle of first mention. Is it the oldest book or is it Genesis? But I don't want to go down there. Is it, is it Job or is it Genesis? Anyway. Well, well the, Job's the oldest book. I know. So I don't know where the principle of first mention is. Is it Job or Genesis? Anyway. Well, in Genesis. Well, it's, in, it's in both because there's some first mentions in Genesis, but there's some first mentions in both. <laughs> that was so beautiful. Of course you'd have that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I don't even worry about stumping you. So, so you know, uh, the first commandment that I know that came out of the mouth of the living God to mankind was go be fruitful and multiply. Feel free to yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. And in the Hebrew, that's only one letter off. But essentially what I kind of got out of it because I, I tend to simplify things. If I'm not flexible, adaptable, and teachable, I will plateau in any area where I'm out to be. I'm supposed yep. to be fruitful and multiple. So why don't you just kind of give us an overlay of that? Because it sounds like I, I can only go as far in the kingdom of God. The 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 um the realm with which I now have access to uh, have a very different life in this world. That's the kingdom of God. It's accessing a, a heavenly realm that I can do right here, right now. It's not yep. a place I go to. And without I can only anybody else changing. without anybody else changing, and I can only go as far as I'm as I'm flexible, adaptable, and teachable because of this yep. commandment to be fruitful and multiply. Help me understand that. Well, you know, now you know if if I go into a full explanation of this, <laughs> we run the risk of offending a lot of people. Mm. Because God let's major says, in that, shall we? <laughs> God, God is saying, I want you to go out into the world. You've got to find the place that feels right to you. Mm. And you've got to do the thing that speaks to you, that inspires you. Yep. And then you do it with all your heart because he's not talking about multiplying just in the sense of kids, you know. Yep. He's talking about multiplying it in everything, every dimension uh, that we that we approach on planet Earth. Well, so God is saying, I want you to be individuals. Now, and this is going to be tough for some people. I'm telling you, and, and you know, if you guys want to edit this out, you can't. It's not going to hurt my feelings. No, we ain't doing that. <laughs> the one lie that is powerful enough to overthrow the entire world is socialism. Mm. 
every socialism promises everything that God promises, but then the process that it uses to try to pretend like it's going to fulfill that promise violates everything God said about how to live life. By the way, you didn't make that line up because that's a quote from Karl Marx or somebody. No. Who was it by and what was the quote? Well, I don't remember the quote exactly, but but Marx hated the idea of socialism. Stalin and Lenin, they hated the they hated the idea of even pretending like man could be happy because you see they were all Satanists before they were socialists. So many people don't know that. So they became they adopted socialism because it parallels all of the beliefs of Satanism. Yeah. And so remember God is saying you go I want you, I want you to discover who you are while you stay in relationship with me. In other words, I'm not going to control who you are. I'm not going to make you be somebody that you don't want to be. That's right. You discover what speaks to you and we'll walk together and I'll help you succeed at it. Mm. But see, socialism says, no, we're going to make an altar and we're going to shape, we're going to make bricks. And see, the altar you know, we are a living altar. We are a living tabernacle to God. Correct. We're made out of living stones. Well, see, living stones are all different shapes, all different sizes. Yep, none, of them are, none of them are clones. None of them look like. But paganism always brought forth the idea of we will build, we will make bricks, and they will all look alike, and they will all be the same. You know, many scholars say that socialism began at the Tower of Babel. You know, I, I was hoping you'd go back there because— and I, I, what's the cool, highly educated term for the the study of names from the beginning of time to now? It's a chronology and how names change. But yeah. we, we use language today. It didn't exist, whatever, 500,000 years ago. And I believe that word has some other meanings, some original meanings that only the words have been changed. I, I don't know if I'm describing this right. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, you know, among other things, and, and I've actually I could I could pull it up real quick, like and, and, and see what it see what it is in the Hebrew, but basically the tower, you know, the word Babel means confusion. So right. it so it is the source of evil because confusion and chaos is how evil always ultimately reigns. Mm, mm. You, you know, people don't people don't just see see people think that okay. I can't say that what this person is doing over here, I can't point to some wicked, wicked thing that it is, but yet you look you look at in their wake, you know, their path of life, it's just filled with chaos and conflict and 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 dead bodies. And yes, you do start finding that 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 e- wickedness grows in that environment, but there's some that's that's not what they're promoting. Mm-hmm. But what they're promoting always brings chaos. So, you know. Uh, there's an amazing guy out right now. His name is uh, Jim Quick. Have you ever heard of Jim Quick? I have. I don't know him, but I've, I've heard the Boy, name. that guy is just, uh, he's touching the world in a profound way with what's possible. Long story short about his life, he had a brain injury when he was five years old, and he was a, a handicapped learner, and he just began a lifetime study of the brain, and now he's literally, I mean, he's worked directly with Bill Gates and all of these world leaders are hiring him to help improve the performance of their brain. And anyway, w- one of the things that I think is so important to understand here is if this is what it is, now what? You know? And, and so what I mean by that is um, how will it affect my life? Uh, uh, why do I want to figure this out right now? And when do I want to do that? You know? how it's going to affect my life. So if, if I have effect on, on this kingdom, if I have the ability to live in harmony, how's that, if that's real, and I, the first time I ever heard you, I did this to myself. If, if this is real, how does this affect my life? And then mm-hmm. what's my big enough why? You know, uh, there's too many broke, busted, disgusted Christians. In fact, the statistics from George Barn, I, I can't remember, but like one out of, uh, two or three out of a, a hundred lead somebody to the Lord their whole life. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. But and, even the concept of leading people to the Lord is based on a negative religious yeah, yeah, concept. I it's know. upside. It's an upside down concept. I know. I've you know, been, the, the thing that influences people is your quality of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, the, uh, Jesus didn't say go make converts. 
He said, go make disciples. Well, why would people want to become disciples? Well, see, the, the, the socialist Luciferian view of that is because God just wants to control you. He wants to keep you oppressed, yeah. never have fun, never enjoy life. But the reality of it is you become a disciple because if you learn the truth about how God created the world and the fact that you're creating his likeness and image, then suddenly, internally, you have this capacity to enter into a realm that Jesus said you can only get into through your own heart. That's right. Called the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. So you begin to have control over yourself and your quality of life. And Peter says, Peter says, just be, look, just be ready to answer those who ask you why you have all this hope. Mm -hmm. And you know, my thing is if, if people never ask you what's different about you, then there ain't nothing different about you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and even to the degree that well, this is where my journey has been kind of interesting, at least from my own perspective, the difference between where I was last year, two years ago, three years ago, those that are around me are noticing it. And I go, you know what? It's okay. I'm not Billy Graham. I probably never will have any right. kind of impact, but they're seeing the progression. They're yep. seeing me walk out a deeper intimacy with God. It's coming out of my pores. And, I, and I, I think that's what's missing a lot. So I think in real practical terms, I want to ask you, what can a person do every single day? If this is true now, you know, so what now? What? That's the line we like you know, to use in seminars. Here's how complicated my life is. <laughs> but th this is it. Everything I do revolves around what I'm about to tell you. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I, ha I make two choices. Today, I'm going to... I'm going to follow the Lord my heart as much as I know how. That's, that's choice number one. Choice number two. And today, as as you know, as much as I have the capacity to trust God, yield to God, I'm going to walk in love. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's my whole agenda. That's my whole mission. But but you know the result of that. You know, Brendan. You know, I'm almost seventy, and and Brendan and I have been married for right at forty years. We're still deeply, passionately in love. We still enjoy, you know, a, a life, and we enjoy each other. You know, no matter what life is doing, we we enjoy yeah. each other. Yeah. And you know, people still want to come to our house just to be here, and experience what that looks like and what that feels like. So you know, if I'm committed to if, I, if I'm just com commit, if I'm committed to walking in love, and I'm talking about God's kind of love, I'm not talking about just yeah, yeah, fuzzy absolutely. Kind of love. But if I'm committed to walking in love, then this means every relationship that I have is pretty incredible mm -hmm. because I'm treating those people the way as much as I understand it, and much as I am willing to, except for the days that I decide to be a jerk, you know. Uh, you know, we all have those moments where we just decide to be a jerk. We think it's going to get us what we want. It never does. But to, or if it does, it only lasts for a minute. And so except for those times, I just decide to be a jerk. You know, you know, uh, uh, there is nothing in my life that actually needs to get better. Mm. Nothing. Mm. And so, you know, if you can get up every single day and you're absolutely contented, you've got incredible friendships and relationships. And even when you've got to make business decisions and stuff, you just are able to, 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 you know, sense and follow God's wisdom in those situations. What else do you want? You know, and, and for those of us that are just kind of evolving there in that area and, and I, boy, you just hit me so hard. I'm thinking how few Christians I know are going, you know, it's just beautiful where it is. My life is crazy blessed right now. I'm discovering on this walk and I journey. It's only been six and a half years since I uh, really started this heart um, yeah. physics program, by the way, impact ministries. It, Dr. Jim is donating his time. Doesn't ask me to do this. I'm just telling you, you need it. It's an amazing experience. It will change your universe. And, and so as I began to do that, I, I, I saw less and less toxic people in yeah. my life. However, they still show up periodically, but nowhere near as frequently, nowhere near as dramatic, nowhere. In fact, I think I told you this about a year ago when we were talking on the phone. One day I just woke up and went, wow, there's no crazy people in my life. <laughs> and I spoke too soon because there's one now. But so what do you do when those toxic people do show up? Because it's got to happen to you too. <laughs> you know, here, here's the what amazing you thing. You know, I, 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 let, me, let me put this into another context. You know, I, I don't do personal counseling anymore. I, I do... Sure personal ministry to people who are influencers. Mm -hmm. 
either pastors or business leaders sure. or that sort of thing because of the world. Because I want to help people that have a multiplication effect, and sure. I only have so many hours in a day. But you know, when when people used to come to me for for marriage counseling, and I would talk to them, uh, the basically my my thing with marriage counseling would always be this: number one, marriage counseling doesn't work. So you know, I, so you're not going to really get marriage counseling when you're here. You just thought you were. Uh, number two, um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you how to decide who you want to be. And you've got to decide that. But, but nothing else in life works until you have decided. That's right. Until you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. And so, and then, and then the third thing was, was always this. It, it's like, now, in the process of being who you want to be, I'm going to teach you how to walk in love. And walking in love does not guarantee that your marriage is going to work. Because that's not what every couple wants. But here's what walking in love will do. It's going to accelerate and either your marriage is going to get great really, really quickly, or you're going to get a divorce very quickly. <laughs> and so I have found that when we walk in love toward people, we are either going to get the chance to help them, or they are going to be so repelled by what we do and how we do it. You know, if you're walking in love, you can't be conned. No. You can't be tricked. You, you don't fall for the scam because you, because greed is what what gets you in this scam. And so if you don't have any greed driving you, you, you nobody can really deceive you. And so and so the guy that's there trying to deceive you, he gives up really quickly because he's like, you know, I, I can't. Yeah, this guy yeah, yeah. Friend, I can't. So. I can't win this guy over, man. I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm thankful when some of those crazy people show up because because if they get to see something that's real and genuine so many times, you know, so many times we end up sitting at my dining room table late, you know, at night when our wives have all gone to bed and they're just saying, how do you do this? How, how does it, why does this mm, work for you? Mm. And I get to share Jesus with them and not just Jesus, you know, I, I mean, I get, I get to start them on the discipleship process. That's right. That's right. And you know, I, I don't care for that word because I think all Christianity needs new branding, but that if it, yeah. people truly understood, look, this is the way to a blessed life. This is the way to a good life. You taught me. Yeah. You taught me this about my own teenager. Maybe you should just ask her. Hey, just out of curiosity, honey, do you want a good life or do you want a bad life? I just want to know which one you wanted. Because, yeah. because nobody goes and robs a liquor store and says, "I'm going to really better my life." I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I, but actually, actually, that's what they do say. I screwed that up. They say, "I'm going to, I'm going to get the money. I'm going to pay my bills." They don't say, I'm going to blow my life up, right? And so right. I think we all go into situations believing something good is going to come out of it when there's a total lack of wisdom driving the train, right? And uh, I, do not want to drive, I do not want to go down this hole, but I know the research on marriage counseling. And the truth is you get divorced more frequently if you go to it than if you don't. I have the white paper about it. It's crazy. Because yeah. the, the gestalt therapy goes back in, reminds you of all the damage, and you relive it. Well, and, Grows in your Actually, heart. all counseling that is based on reviewing the problems yeah. actually makes people worse. I know. You know, uh, when I, when I, you know, I've had, I'm a certified substance abuse counselor. I'm a certified detox specialist. Uh, you know, I, I have, uh, you know, a doctor's degree in alternative medicine. Um, I had a clinic for years. I worked on the, I worked on the floor of Lincoln Hospital in New York, in New York, and in, in, in the South Bronx. Uh, and so, so I've been, and plus, you know, that's my background. I was a druggie, man. I'm, I, I was whack crazy, you know? Yeah, we're both and, uh, and so, you know, uh, that's the people I understand how to help and, 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 and work with so very, very much. And, and, uh, man, uh, where were we going when we jumped off this? My, well, my, my phone distracted me. Something happened. There. No, I know so, the same thing happened to me. Where we're going was traditional therapy doesn't work for a lot of reasons. Oh, oh, yeah. And you've got a heck of a lot of background to testify to that aside from my yeah. white paper. So, so uh, when people would come in for counseling, you know, I had about five rules and I had an incredibly high success rate, whether it was substance abuse, whether it was immorality, didn't matter what it was, had a really high success rate. It wasn't necessarily because I was that good of a counselor. It was just because I managed to figure out from a biblical perspective, how man is wired Therefore, what actually works with him. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I would do when people would come in, I said, okay, here's what we'll do. I'm going to give you 15 minutes to tell me 
what the problem is, and we ain't never talking about it again. Yep, yep, yep. Everything from here, every, the first 15 minutes, everything from here is going to be how to put your life together. And we're not, we're not going to relive, rethink, you know, all this kind of stuff. But like I said, the studies show that the majority of people who get that type of therapy, where they're always going back and review it, actually get worse. Yeah. Amen. Just to highlight something, uh, how many books do you have? How, how many books have you authored? Do you even know? Well, I've got, <clears throat> I've got about 20 something that are, are published in print and I've got actually about 80 written that, that I'll be releasing for the next few years while I'm alive. And that, that will continue to be released for about 20 years after, I, after I'm gone. <laughs> You know, if you weren't such a slacker, the world could really hear a lot more about what you got going on. But well, <laughs> the hard part is not writing books. The hard part is getting them into people's hands, getting them, getting them into the hands of people that really won't help. So here's what I wanted to ask you, because <clears throat> I don't want to go any further down this way. People that want breakthroughs and things that they're stuck, w- which one of your books would you recommend they just jump on Impact Ministries and grab a hold of and eventually Christian.com? You know, um, I'll stop I, I really, well... I like to be a little more specific. I, I don't really like to get people just to buy my books, you know? Oh, amen. That's not what this is about. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if a person is dealing with a lot of emotional uh, pain from past hurtful experiences, yes, how to stop the pain is a great place to start. Probably the most generalized book that will fit everything is um, uh, is is going to be... Uh, Take control of your life. Mm. Okay. And then from, from there, the titles of the books are kind of self uh, explanatory. Yeah, they are. And uh, by the way, that looks amazing. That, that whole platform looks a lot different than the last time I saw it. Hey, um, okay. So the reason I did that was, by the way, not to plug a book, is to give people solutions. Not, nothing here is yep. about that at all. It's about a compassion to help people and a passion to, yep. to help people. And I also want to shift gears because. I want to, I, I hear too often a lot of well-meaning Christians and unfortunately some pastors, you know, uh, pastor, most of the problems that happen is because Satan is a pretty powerful foe. And, uh, you know, I, I've been trying to really be a good guy and I've been trying to do good by my family and by my, by those around me, but boys, I got, I got Satan mad. He's just causing me all kinds of ha- havoc. Where am I and about a million people listening? are off where are we off <laughs> well we're off because one of the see our entire everything you know the word salvation means born again saved healed delivered blessed prospered protected and made whole so in other words the word salvation first of all is this incredibly inclusive word and secondly the word salvation m- has more to do with how with what's happening here in this life yeah. not what happens after this life how so, important is that? And all of salvation, every aspect of salvation is contingent upon our faith in what was accomplished the from cross. the cross to the throne. Now, uh, it, this, is, this, is, this is the fulcrum of faith. This is the cornerstone. This is where everything comes from. And I can promise you this. You know, I've got a series on my website called Three Days That Changed the World. And all it talks about is what happened after Jesus died. Mm-hmm. You know, what, where, what, what took place and what happened in the resurrection and what happened, you know, what are the, what happened in this? And here's the, here's the thing I can, I can tell you, I don't know that I've ever met and I'm sure other people have done it. I'm not saying, but I've never actually been in a service in, in nearly half a century where anybody actually talked about what happened through the death, burial, and resurrection. Now they would just kind of give a, a general generalize talking to but one of the things that happened in the resurrection is that jesus ascended into heaven he goes into the heavenly holy of holies and purges it because remember there had been a rebellion there and it had to be purged and he Mm -hmm. purged it with his own blood and then it says that he stripped satan of all right of all rank of all power and 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 Satan is under his feet, and because we are in him, he's under our feet. So the real truth is, Satan can't touch you. 
He can't do anything to you. He can't speak in your head. He can't read your mind. Uh, anytime these things are happening to us, uh, it has, I'm not saying the devil's not real, and I'm not saying he doesn't have an influence on earth, but I'm saying all of that stuff that people do is a denial of the finished work of Jesus. Isn't that and I've got a book crazy. called Satan Unmasked. If people want to get past this. Now, let me say this. You know, I've had Satanists come to burn my house out in the middle of the night. <laughs> I love this I've story. Had, I've had witch doctors. I can't even tell you how many times in different countries, witch doctors have come to kill me. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could just go on with this stuff, you know, on and on and on. All, all these times these things have happened. And when I walk into a room, and you don't do, I, this doesn't happen much anymore, but you know, back in the 80s and 90s when everybody was demon crazy, I'd go into, I'd walk into a room and some little girl would be throwing men up against the wall and carrying on, like, you know, growling and spitting and right. foaming. And, and the minute I walk in the room, I just go, stop. And that was it. They stopped. <laughs> Those things only happen to people who believe they can happen because they don't believe what Jesus did to Satan at the resurrection. Yeah, and that's so powerful because, again, it comes down to the heart level belief that you have about who Christ really is, the power of the death, burial, and resurrection. And, yeah. you know, part of, part of my crazy journey, in fact, I said this on a podcast yesterday, I think, or the day before, I don't remember. There's a guy named Grant Cardone. It's a pretty big business guy. And for whatever reasons, he and I are both stolen uh, and in the database of these African organized crime organizations and um, um, law enforcement agencies have actually nailed down the IP address. This is three separate buildings. There's hundreds of people working my database. It's insane. Well, I get these periodically, uh, half, time, half a dozen times a year, from the scammers who are angry because we all have anti-scammers trying to help us. Uh, mm -hmm. Just an amazing group of volunteers. I'm so thankful for them. And he'll say, you know, we just went to the rich doctor and we cast a spell on you and your kids and your family. Da, 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 da. And <clears throat> every once in a while, I'm just being real here, man. <laughs> every once in a while, when a bunch of stuff goes out of my life, I go, hmm, what do I really believe here? <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a good sign, by the way. <laughs> but to the well, degree that I that believe. Comes up, when you've been, you know, when you've had that stuff pounded into you for 20 or 30 years, yeah. it's going to pop up. And that's not Satan speaking in your mind. It's called memory. <laughs> Yep. 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 Um, I totally agree. All right. So here's where I want to, I mean, I know I, I want to shift gears because I just feel there's so many things. So people think that God is, uh, he's in control. He's got, he's got this angry side. He's kind of schizophrenic. If you leave the, read the old Testament, he's kind of this new loving, cool God in the new, all of these things are, I'm hoping, hoping we get on un mass. And I also believe that we have a, a wrong opinion, viewpoint, understanding of the whole work that Satan is capable and is not capable of doing in our life. And then there's this whole other gravity centric people that go, yeah, that's all good. But Jim, you don't really understand science very well because let me tell you, evolution has been a hundred million years and, and <laughs> you hear all these different sounds mm -hmm. and mankind has been here a whole lot. And you know, some of the elementary things, uh, and I know you're going to go real deep on this, it disturbed the heck out of me. Uh, about even evolution. So, for example, the original title in the book was about racism. Uh, yeah. And, of course, they changed that. And that blows my mind when uh, African-American scholars start ranting and raving about evolution. But, but the thing that I was thinking about uh, the, the last couple of days, because I wanted to hit you up with this question, is right now there's about 7.5 billion people on the planet Earth. And just 40 years ago, there was less than half of that. So if we have been here for... Uh, 50 million at the smallest yep. one I, I know of. Don't we have a math problem? Oh, uh, we got more than a math problem. <laughs> All right. You know, you know, the interest, well, the, there are several interesting things about, about Darwin's books or about Darwin's philosophies. Darwin, by the way, like Marx, and I think, I can't remember if it was Lenin, uh, was someone who originally was very devout, had a tragedy happen in his life, and because the church told him that God was in control, therefore God either did it or allowed it, then Marx, Lenin, Darwin, and I could be wrong about Lenin, I can't remember, it was another big communist leader, but then they turned against God and became yeah. Satanist. Right. And so, so Darwin, you know, he had his own spiritual issues. Now, 
and Darwin says in his book uh, that you have you have to reject a lot of science in order for his theory of evolution to make sense. So so here we that here doesn't we even are. make sense. <laughs> no, so here we are with the educators saying. This is the standard of science, but you have to reject science in order to be able to accept it. I mean, that in itself is crazy. But what's very interesting about this is not only has the law, uh, the, the, the theory of evolution never been proven, it has actually been disproven thousands of times. That's my understanding now, as well. By the way. By the way, you just blew up a bunch of people's heads when you said that. Oh, yeah. You got anything to back that with? Uh, well, Darwin's writings, for one thing, <laughs> you know, in my book, Apocalypse, I talk about and, and the, the documented cases where, um, where what is now the Smithsonian had thousands of fossils that they found and, and that disproved evolution, and they hit them. They, cover, they, they, they actually stayed hidden for 70 or 80 years and before they were found. But, but you have to realize, governments cannot dominate populations unless those populations are codependent and needy. Okay. Therefore, a Darwinism uh, makes it impossible for man to have the dignity and worth that comes from knowing I am created in the likeness and the image of God. And so you have to realize the governments of the world deliberately, vehemently work to make sure that the true science is never revealed, even though it's all been proven. And you know, it's, it's crazy because when people start talking like this, and especially when they're highly educated like you, we, th there is a default mechanism within culture. And it just basically says, this is a conspiracy, which is a great way to dismiss fact when it's actually, yeah. and I, I don't deny there are weird stuff like the earth's not flat. I promise you, I just absolutely <laughs> can right. guarantee it. I know pilots, I know snipers that have to adjust the scope. It's not yeah. flat. And yet there are people, believe, this is not what we're talking about, man. No. It's not even remotely what we're talking about. So let, so I, and I've been wanting to ask you, I love that we didn't even talk about this before. It, if, the, if, if God says that mankind is 6,000 years and change, I think, you can correct mm -hmm. me. And wait a minute, back up. The archaeological finds that they date actual human bones, 50 million, 20 million, Hundred million years. How can they be so far off? What's well? What do, what do we? Miss? There's several factors that come to play. Number one, there is the factor that these tests. They have no way to prove that their tests are even correct. And you know, we have had scientists come to us with fossils that they said you know were were uh, millions of years old, and they found out you know that kids had burned them with cigarettes and hit them, and and it was uh, the whole thing you know was a prank. I've seen that. And 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 so you know the test. The test can't be proven to be. How can you? What do you use? To, you know, I do. I do testing here all the time. Like just testing simple pH with my pH meter. I have to regularly, you know, take a, a, a something that I know is a certain pH, put it in, and calibrate the meter to make sure that it's testing properly. So, how do you calibrate something to prove that you're proving that something is twenty million years old? Well, yeah. you can't. Yeah, but that's not even the big. That's not the big news. Here's the big news. So remember, like I said, quantum science is slowly catching up with the Bible. You know, on the library in the library at MIT is the mathematical equation that proves not only is the Earth the age that God says it is, but that creation happened in six actual 24-hour days and happened in the exact sequence that the Bible records it. So, you know, if the, if the greatest mathematician minds on planet Earth have proven this, you would think somebody would be paying attention. You'd think. Now, uh, can you, I, I've heard you elaborate on that a little bit more. I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot here because you need to read some data and some not, and that's okay. Uh, I can give a thumbnail sketch. Yeah, yeah. The, explain to the audience exactly what you just said because it's mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling. You know, uh, we see space and time are linked. Correct. They're intimately linked. So, with quantum science, we came to realize that the universe 
is constantly expanding. And they did this, and I, you know, I won't get these details right, by, by uh, understanding dark matter mm-hmm. and, and, how, and how that relates to the expansion of, of all things. So <clears throat> if the universe is changing in size, then that means that time is actually changing too. We just don't perceive it. Correct. So here, here is the way that in my limited scientific thinking and understanding that, that I can explain this and grasp it. If you were standing there on the day that man was created and you were looking forward because of where time and space was, if you were looking forward from there till now, it would be almost 6,000 years because the universe was at a certain size, therefore time had a certain dimension. Okay, got it, it's easy. But if you come down here to where we are now and look back. Changes. It changes because Space has expanded, therefore, time has changed. Mm -hmm. One of one of the things I used when I would teach this in a classroom setting or even in a seminar, I'd get a big wide rubber band, and I would I had different ways of doing it. But for example, I might say, okay, uh, uh, right here is uh, the South Pole, and right here is the North Pole, and I would say, now, time and space are changing. So it, it now, if I if I walk from the South Pole to the North Pole back here, it would take me two hours. But time, and I start stretching the rubber band. Well, what, when you stretch the rubber band to change the space, then the South Pole and the North Pole get further apart, which means the time that it would take to go from one to the other now would be years. Mm-hmm. So with the expansion of the universe comes the expansion of time, which means time is not a fixed is not a fixed factor. And no matter where you're standing in creation, time is understood or measured by whether you're looking back or whether you're looking forward. And how in the Does world? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Well, you know, I can grasp it. And, and, and what even makes me wonder more is how do you measure that with any kind of technology, which they, you know, believe wholeheartedly is real. Can you put up the populations of the earth when you get a chance? Um, uh, what, what is the major, uh, measuring, uh, mechanical mechanism that does that, uh, at Jim Richards, uh, site? I'm, 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 I'm blank right now. Man. Yeah. I, 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 um, I want to say radon, but it's not that, but I, I've read, I really spent a lot of time with that years ago. And basically I walked away with a conclusion that it is, there's no scientific factual, uh, no. Uh, data that says this is absolute truth and yet there's a yeah, bunch it, it of people speculating that it is and, it and by the be. way so but let me ask you be. that is the, is there a difference between mankind being six thousand years old and everything that you currently understand about god the universe and is it possible the plan is a uh, planet is older well no, from a biblical exact, perspective from a biblical and scientific perspective we know that the earth see see the big bang theory even though they didn't understand it, they were actually talking the Bible because God has had to start everything, you know, from this finite point and, and it started expanding. And so the big bang theory really explains what happened. So planet earth, not only planet earth, but all our, you know, our universe, our galaxy, all of the other galaxies and universes all had to come into being because, you know, there are trillions of interactions, cellular interactions that take place in your body every minute. It's amazing. Now, what, what we know scientifically, but nobody wants to talk about. It. And remember, Paul writes in the book of Romans that people deliberately choose not to know this. That's right. Romans one twenty and Romans one twenty one. Uh, where he's talking about creation and and he talks very specifically about the truth about creation is something that people choose to be ignorant of. Um, So uh, 
creation is, is the first pillar of faith. People who do not believe God's account of creation and God's account of creating man will never have stable faith. You know, I've heard no. you say that a number of times. Never. No. And I've actually wrestled with why that's such a big thing and not really uh, followed it up in our one-on-one time together. Yeah. And, and all I could come up with is, if I'm not going to believe that, what else do I get to pick and choose? I mean, is it a smorgasbord Bible where I, I kind of believe that I don't quite believe it, or I think you got some more. I think you have something more to that. Oh yeah, there, there's, there's, there's a, a lot more to it. But you're right. That's the first thing. If the very first thing I discover about God is a myth, what else? How can I believe anything else? Yeah. yeah. But you see, God, and this, if we're created the likeness and image of God, then we function like God. Mm. Right, right. God modeled in creation how to work faith. Yeah. Now, Jesus in Mark 11, the way he explains it there is exactly the process that God follows. God conceives something in his heart. Oh. And see, the word where it says, and God said, let there be, that word for said is not, does not emphasize the spoken word. We've been taught that, but it doesn't. It emphasized that that word came from what, number one, had first been conceived in his heart. Mm -hmm. So he conceived all, all of, of this, this in his heart. All so, of us, this universe, everything, all of us. Now, you talk about the proactive, preemptive love of God. And <laughs> help, me remember where, help me remember where I am, because I want to yeah. kind of go back to what I was saying. Now, see, these trillions of cellular interactions that take place, are determined or influenced by the distance of each of our planets and our solar system, mm -hmm. by the stardust, which is basically carbon that sweeps across our planet Earth, you know, through our through our solar system, uh, the speed that the Earth spins, the magnetic flux of the Earth. In other words, see, here, here here's another thing the socialists want you to believe. There's nothing unique about the planet Earth. We are going to, prove. We're, we're going to spend trillions of dollars to prove there's nothing unique about planet Earth. Because if we can find anything that we can pretend like is life somewhere else, and that does away with the whole God creation theory. How many mathematical equations have to go on to make this all happen? See, God had to, God had to know all those equations. Absolutely. But what, what's interesting, he had to first create not just an Earth, not just a solar system, not just a galaxy, not just universes after you. He had to create all of this in a way that created a unique environment that supported all of these tra all of these interactions for us to live and think. You know, I mean, everything, even lightning. You don't you don't want it lightnings. One of the things that that's doing is that's balancing the frequency uh, uh, on, on, between planet Earth and stratosphere. So that man can have normal thoughts and, and not not everybody be crazy and running wild because it it, it, it it actually balances back to the brainwave frequency that's the most healthy. I mean, you, I just oh. go, there's just hundreds of calculations like that. So God was showing His love and His desire for life to be incredible. For oh. every, see, we were created to live in paradise. We yeah. were we we weren't even given the capacity to deal with pain. God never wanted us to deal with pain. And you got people saying, oh, God, so he did this to you to teach yeah, you no, something. No, he didn't. You know? No, no, he didn't. You know, stupid might have, might have did something to you to teach you something. But, but God All of it almost. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting because in the book of Deut Deuteronomy, it actually says that if, if you have the capacity to do something to save somebody from something and you don't, you're as guilty as the person doing it to him. That's right. violating of who God really is. But I want, I want to get That's back to God this. the devil. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Uh, well, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, you know what the number one draw, well, I don't know if it's still the number one draw. The number one thing that draws Christians away from God into Satanism. No. It, is that God is in control. Mm -hmm. And and so the, the foundational doctrinal position that all Satanism flows from is, look, God is in control. And so since the world is so messed up, that is the proof that he's not a good God. And and they look at it and go, okay, well, if he's in control, there's no way he can be a good God. Yeah, you Convert. know, I, 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 speaking of Bill Maher earlier in the show, 
uh, Bill Maher did this uh, documentary called Re- Religiosity. I don't know if you ever saw it. And uh, I, had, I just stumbled onto your work about the time that came out. And he would go out and he would interview all these experts and all these different people were just caught up in religion, just really, really bad. And he would go, you know, well, if God's real, why are all these bad things happening? And they would give, it kind of reminded me that uh, y- your car is leaking oil and, you know, you come to me, who, by the way, can't do anything in a car. And they go, I don't know, I think you need a new engine. It looks to right. me like you need a new engine because that's how good I am at this. That's what it sounded like. And, yeah. <laughs> and I, all I could think of is, I wonder who my Hollywood contacts are. We got to do a second documentary and I got to get Jim Richards on this because because there's an answer for all these things that people are tripping over, just yeah. tripping over and lost. And, and, and even asking me, and I get a lot of messages from people to pray for me because I'm going through this and that. And I almost want to say, it doesn't work that way. I'll do it. It doesn't, right. doesn't really work that way. Here, here's your responsibility. Here's what I'll come in agreement with you. Sounds like you lack wisdom. Let's pour into James 1. Lean on God for, with wisdom and don't waver. Mm-hmm. And watch what he does because this is all up to you to, to navigate yeah. through this, right? So, so man, oh, man, I, I, I don't even know where to go next because I'm sitting here. I, by the way, I do, want, I do know where I want to go. When God spoke the universe yeah. into Yeah, existence, I wanted to get back to that, yeah. Yeah, he encoded every atom and molecule with his wisdom, which we now have yeah. access to. So can you explain to the audience how, uh, when we talk about all things are possible with God, it ain't what we think. It's at the, f- and I know f- Christians freak out over this. There's already a quantum field. There's already a, a thing that God created, if you're not comfortable with that language, all right that Mm -hmm. enables you to do amazing supernatural things, at least by our definition of supernatural. What am I missing? Well, no, you're not missing anything. You know, you go, you go back to the model of God. Let's go, let's just cover that a little bit more because see, he, he conceived it, Mm -hmm. but the Hebrew word also couples that with intention. So he had an intention. The intention was, you know, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to come into, into existence. And this is what it's going to be able to, to do. This is what's going to be able to provide. And then he would say, and it's good. Well, that word good in the Hebrew, more than anything else, has to do with harmony. Mm-hmm. And, and, and based on the Hebrew letters in it, it means that it was in harmony with, uh, with God's intentions. It was in, in harmony with the heart of God. But what's interesting, that Hebrew word also reveals it's in harmony with man. Mm-hmm. So now, when, there are some stories scientific scholars that believe that the first mention of light and darkness in the Bible is not sunlight and, and darkness because that, that comes later. It, uh, oh, light it and darkness very possibly points to the fact that God established the polarities mm. because you nothing can exist in a physical world without polarities. Yeah, it's a physics 101 principle. So, so God creates the field. I like what I like to call. He, he creates the field where the polarities are, and see, in that field, He had to put into that field all of the things, the subatomic things that would mass together energetically to bring about physical things. Mm-hmm. So, so He He creates the field with the polarities and with all of the energies that it would take to create things. And some of those energies came from him supernaturally. Some of those energies came from all of this interaction between our planets and our solar system, you know, uh, uh, between our solar system and other uh, systems, and other galaxies. And so, so there was this combination of the, uh, of, of the, the, it's all natural. Even what we call supernatural is Absolutely. Natural. Because he, because he put it here. It's just, it's just, it's just like the spectrum of light. We just don't see in that spectrum, but it's there, and it's, and and God doesn't have to do anything to get to work. So, I, so you you've got the field, and in the field is the potential for everything that God's ever going to create. Oh. Now, in the in the Greek of Hebrew eleven, where it says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for," that word "substance" is. It, it has a very broad and interesting meaning because, I mean, it can mean foundation. I thought it meant substructure. 
Well, I get to that. Yeah, it can mean foundation. So you got to have something that gives a foundation. But then when you, you know, when you start taking it down to the subatomic world, it becomes a substructure. Now, one of the things that we know is that energy crosses fields where it slows down below the speed of light. And and the, whatever substructure is created, then then energy comes together to to uh, build on that substructure. Jeez. Now I, I I like to think about that like blood cells in the body. See people people think we catch disease. The, the entire germ theory of Pasteur was a complete lie. That's my and understanding. It was he admitted it on his deathbed. He admitted it was a lie. He admitted that he stole it. It was plagiarism from somebody who had not yet finished their research. But see, it and was every doctor in every hospital would get sick every day if it was an absolute fact. They'd get sick every oh, day. Oh, exactly, exactly. So, so the reason it caught on was because it fit the narrative that the drug companies wanted. Absolutely. It, if, if if germs give you these diseases, then we got to give you something to kill every specific germ for every specific disease. That, that, that's the whole theory behind it. But but the, the real truth is, and I'm going to use very non-medical, very non-scientific terms because I will make this conceptual. Throating, floating through your body are millions of what I call non-committed cells. Okay. And those cells, based on environment, will morph into cancer, yeast, candida, or they will morph into repairing the, the, a cell to go into your kidney and, and be something healthy, but it's all about environment. That's what Pastor said on his deathbed. He said the cell, is, he said the germ is nothing. The environment is everything. So when I think about the, and see, remember microcosm, macrocosm, everything works the same way. Once you figure out how God put it together, you know how everything works. There, there's not a thousand different ways. So the universe is the same way. You've got all of this non-committed subatomic energy that when God spoke, the, the faith that he used, sp uh, spoke from, what was in his heart, that was the substructure. Mm. And the energy, the subatomic energy, was drawn to that substructure and came into what he had conceived and intended in his heart. Yep. Now, if we are created in the likeness and image of man, and even the people that believe we're created in the likeness and image of man, they'll say, yeah, but we lost our authority when man sinned. Uh, really? Give me, a, give me a scripture for that. I'd yeah. really like to say it. We didn't lose our authority. We just became flesh. We became self people seeking self-gratification. So the real truth is Jesus didn't say, if you speak to this mountain and tell it to move, God will make it move. That's not what he said. Said it he said, if you speak to this mountain, it will move. Yep, yep, yep. You now, know, I, nobody I, wants to go there. I, I, well, you know what? And I, and I what? If I known we're going to go down this, this is the beauty of podcast. I, the way that I want the audience to understand something is that there are dogmatic Christians uh, lost in a lot of crazy doctrines, and there are dogmatic scientists. Absolutely, uh, and they have been taught, instructed gathered an opinion that they're diametrically opposed. And the truth is, <laughs> all science is, is giving language to things that God created to start yeah, with. Yeah, that's already here. <laughs> there are no contradictions. There's only right. a science who's being deceptive, and there's all kinds of agenda-driven science. And we don't go on that one. That'd be a whole other show. Uh, and there's all kinds of uh, uh, dogmatic faith-based people believing all science is against the yeah. power of the living God. And, and what they don't realize is God's a God of order. God's Absolutely. the ultimate Hebrew mathematician and lawyer. <laughs> there's yeah. laws. There's math. Absolutely. There's, there's an absence of chaos. There's a, there's a gravitational pull towards order on everything. And yeah. Man, isn't this all about this show? Like, how do you harmonize with that, man? How do you just well, start doing it? It's but see, that's the simplicity of real faith. See, real faith is never trying to make something happen. Real faith is if you believe the truth, then you just harmonize with you harmonize with that truth. You, you that's the way you think. That's the way you see life, mm. and it just works. I don't you you know I could really just 
not write the kind of books I write. And really, I could just write, I could take every year of my life and say, okay, I'm just going to write a book about the phenomenal things that happened last year in my life. <laughs> and, and, and most people would just never even believe it. They would just absolutely never believe it. But it's like I said earlier, I don't ever really try to make these good things happen. It's a serendipity principle. You know, you if you walk this particular path, all along this path, you just find all the things that pertain to life. It is just that simple. You know what? You, you just you just said segued into what I wanted to say and wasn't sure I could remember because I always want to stay present with you. It's always something I want to pick up, and it's I love this relationship. And one of it was um, when I encounter something in the Word of God that I have a different perspective on. It is my job as a God follower, follower to let go of my perspective and take on God's. Yeah. That is the process of harmony. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, that's, a, that's humility. <laughs> that's repentance. That's renewing the mind. That's harmony. Yeah. You know, like I, I could use an extra hundred grand right now and there's a bank down the street and I could rob that bank if that was my heart's intention. But the truth is that's not in harmony with God. That will just right. bring more chaos into my life. Right. And most of us understand that easy of a decision, but isn't there a million we're making in between something that stupid and the stupidity with which we live most of our lives? Here, look, here's the crazy thing. <laughs> you can only be tempted to the degree that you feel lack. Oh, man. You can't right. be tempted to steal a million dollars if you think a million dollars is out of your reach. Yeah. You can't be tempted to commit adultery if you think you can't have a wonderful, intimate life with your with your spouse. Oh, so you know, you, powerful. I mean, it's just it's just that simple. And see, that's in the garden. That was the first thing. The whole conversation between the serpent and Eve was that was creating the feeling of lack. Welcome and, to and lack. It, was a, it was never a head on attack. It was never like. God's lying to you. It's like, well, you know, if you really were like God, you could do this, you know, and you could do it. And so it's like, oh, oh, I never thought about that. There's something, there's something I, I don't have. There's something, see, God's holding out on me. Man, oh, man. And you know, so it, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, well, yeah, but I, I don't want to say this before we get too far off track. So, so here's the thing. More New Agers use biblical faith <laughs> than Christians do. And the sad thing is, because they don't recognize that God created the laws that they're using, then they say, this is the proof you don't need God, that you're a God. That's right. That's right. And so they're using God's laws and it's working. And then that, that becomes their proof because the church is over said, oh, no, if you don't do this formula, if you don't tack the name of Jesus, you know, and, and, and you know, most of the people that I've, that I've ever gotten healed from me laying hands on them or praying for them. I don't even know if I ever even said the name of Jesus about half the time. I just laid hands on me in my heart. I'm like, God, you're, 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 you know, your life, you're here, you're present. And so I just say, okay, now God's in you, uh, you know, put your heart on him, you know, imagine what you'd look like being whole and well and strong and yield it to the life of God and now stand up and walk. And I've seen, yeah, you know, I've seen about a thousand cripples probably. I'm talking about cripples. I'm talking about some of them. Real deal. Clean. I know you have. I'm talking about get up off of a, off of a stretcher and walk away or blind people, you know, get their eyes open. And, you know, it's, it's no how hard, how loud do you scream? How hard do you work at it? It's just harmonizing with who God is, what God has done. And, and, and see, the deal is sealed. Our qualification for all that and the end of all questions comes to through the death, burial and resurrection. Because, see, God did not make the covenant with man. This is something religious people drive me crazy with. Yeah, it's first, of all, first of all, they cancel out every covenant. They cancel out the covenant God made with Jesus by every old covenant that has already been superseded. But, you know, people talk about, well, you know, I'm in covenant with God. I'm like, no, stupid, you're not. <laughs> and, 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 you know, Jesus is. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, because if I am individually in covenant with God, then it is up to me to qualify it's up to me to stay qualified. It's up to me not to break my end of it. And you know what? I know me. I have a gift. Now, this I can only. There's a Greek word for this. I don't know the English word, but in the Greek, it's called screw up. <laughs> and that, that you know that is my gift. If anybody can mess something up, I can figure out how to do it. And I have you know I had a I had a lot of years of, of, of doing that. Uh, so uh, I know I would mess it up. But the thing is, Jesus, He is our qualification. Yep. Jesus, 
he received the inheritance. See, I don't, I'm not trying to get uh, a better position, a better position. No. Jesus has got it. My faith is not about, do, do I have enough faith to get this? My faith is, did Jesus get this through the resurrection? And so if he did, then even though lost people can use these same laws, the difference is I've got righteousness working in me that drives me to want to be like God, to want to walk in love. I've got, I've got a righteousness that's a free gift. I didn't earn it. That, that, says, that says, I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to settle. I'm qualified for everything. And see, when you know, every, when you know you're qualified for everything, when you know everything is within your reach, you can't feel lack. No, no. And that's the persuasion of the heart journey that you have people all over the world on. Yeah. And I think it's such a powerful, powerful message for the church. You know, I'm thinking about, can I really wrap this up in a way that I, that my uh, intention signals were headed when we first started? And that is, there's just all of these, these little pieces of the puzzle. You know, God's not an angry God. There isn't this big dem demonic Satan ruining our lives, you know? There is an ability to access all of the things that we need through what God already created, both in the creation of the universe and the world, but also in the death, the burial, and the resurrection. If people knew that his heart was totally bent towards love and grace and mercy, instead of all of these religious concepts, wouldn't the world be more inclined to embrace this amazing God? Oh. Absolutely. But, you know, number one, as individuals, we would see God as he is. Therefore, we wouldn't, you know, our faith would work because faith works by love. In other words, you don't trust somebody unless you believe they love you. You're not going to trust somebody that might hurt you. Yeah. So so if I believe he loves me, man, I'm, I'm in faith. You know, I trust for anything. And then the world gets to see it work in my life and then they want it, you know. Oh, man. And I, uh, I, I still think one of the most powerful works of yours is moving your invisible boundaries. And yeah. again, uh, you haven't told me to plug anything. I'm not plugging anything. I'm telling right. you, if you want break. No, I know you just, you want to help people. You know? That's the reason I wrote the books is to help people. You know, yeah, I, I absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's funny cause I've, I've, you know, been an awful lot of powerful personal development circles in this world and nobody has impacted my life at the level that you have nobody. And even though some of those things that I learned were extraordinary, some of them really helped my life, especially when it came to my mind, will, and emotions, just my emotional yeah. uh, perspectives, just the reality that I could control my emotions. They didn't have to control me. That, oh, man, yeah. That's a big one. Uh, yeah. But nobody tied it in where I didn't have to feel guilty that I might have been dabbling in the new age thing. Yeah. I really wasn't. And, and we talked about that briefly, but I wanted, I, also, I wanted to say this back then. Just because uh, people who don't know God discovered universal laws that God created, i.e., freaking gravity yeah. uh, doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you. In fact, right. if people start using gravity w 10 times more frequently and a lot more effectively than, than uh, Christians, that doesn't make it wrong. And it doesn't make right. it something that God didn't do. He did it. And it's real, you know? And man, if we just understand these universal laws, how they're there, the beauty of God, the the, the, uh, the way that I see God's just uh, got this beautiful love story and all he wants to do is mm -hmm. heal us from the damage. <laughs> That's right. And That's you know, right. We're, we're a bunch of abused kids that just need to get healed. Yeah. And, and, and I want to tell the, the listeners, the listeners that, that this has been an experience for me that wasn't, uh, I read one chapter in the book and everything shifted. It is an ongoing everyday process of persuading my heart of who I am in the finished work of Christ to quote a private conversations between you and I yesterday, whether I deserve it or not, because yep. I didn't do anything to earn this, the, the blood of Jesus yep. gift. I didn't, I didn't do it. And, and it also gets me to a point where I want to, I want to do these things from a heart of love. Not, I don't, I don't want to be obedience from, no. from a checklist, from no. a, from a, a fleshly working kind of way. Like, look at me, I'm such a great Christian, but I'm just, you, 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 want, you know what that makes me think of? When, when, when people when people kind of give that checklist i'm like okay so let me tell you so you're feeling real kind of froggy tonight and you're thinking boy me and my wife tonight's the night we're gonna hook up tonight and so you know man she puts on your favorite sexy nightgown and 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 you know sweet smell and perfume and so then you run over to the bed and say okay now 
uh, sit on the side of the bed. Okay. Now, now we got that covered. Now, kind of roll over on the bed. And, I mean, yeah, that would get your be hair a lot just like this. May, makeup's a little shiny. By the way, that's my dog. But anybody wants to know, that's my 117 pound dog in the background barking. And I'm, I'm sorry, this is just real life. We just I love it. Life. I love it. I can't wait to see you there. So, you know, I, I just want to leave the audience with this, this, this really the, the intention of this session, and that is that, um, you know, if you seek God, you're going to find him. You're going to find him for real. And, uh, and he's there, and he wants to know you intimately, purposefully. He wants to heal the parts of your heart, their heart that are broken, parts of your life that are broken. And, uh, and religion is never going to be able to do that for you, man. It's never no. going to be able to do that for you. But in experience, you know, I think about all the, Broke, busted, disgusted, I like that term. Christians, I know. I know Christians sit at home all night long and drink. And, you know, last night was very, very hard in my life. And, and I thought, you know, I love what, what I love about you right now, God. I didn't sleep. I have a lot going on that's very chaotic. And I thought, you know, I don't have to go to drugs. I don't have to go to alcohol. I don't have to go to crazy stuff. I'm just going to, I'm going to let you deal with this. It's garbage. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I want to participate in this because I know this is not of you. Yep. And, and, and just being at a place where I can do that is mm-hmm. such a, a, a healthier place than I used to be. Yeah. And I'm just thankful for your ministry that helped me to realize uh, that. And I think that's all of our journeys, man. You know, it. all I really get to share with people is just what I've had to walk through is, 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 is not. And, and I always tell people, I never really tell people anything they don't know. I remind people of what they heard in their heart one time and, mm-hmm. and they let somebody talk them out of it. And, and and people just go, oh, you know what? I knew that. I, I knew I knew God was a good God. I don't know, you know, I don't know how I got off on this crazy stuff. But man, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this opportunity. I appreciate you letting me come and share with the people that you have influence over. And and, and again, you know, I don't care if you agree with me or, or disagree, but that's not the point. If I can provoke you to opening the Bible and instead of reading it to make it say what you want to say, oh, just open the Bible. Say, okay, now Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to read this. I'm just going to look for how to live my life. And anything that I'm reading, if there's any way it would bring quality to my life, show it to me. Bing. And uh, and that's it. Bing. Because that's what that's what a disciple does. It's like, you you know how to live. You know how, how to get the best quality of life. So just show me. And, uh, and I'll make this journey. And you know what? I, I have seen, I've taken people through becoming millionaires by teaching them the biblical principles of wealth. And then finally they go, you know something? I'm surrendering my heart to Jesus. He yeah. was like, oh no, they gotta do it, they gotta do it first. No, they don't. Yeah. See, if, if a person becomes a convert because of just some uh pers- persuasion, a good argument, a good sermon, then all somebody's gotta do is preach a better sermon and they're gonna convert to something else. Yeah, amen. But when a person starts applying this stuff, and day after day they Changes see it work life. and improve the quality of their life, then finally they have a life experience that says, Man, I, I I trust you, and nobody can talk me out of this. Yeah, yeah, man. That's it. That's all I want. That's the that's the journey we want everybody on. It's just to pursue okay. God and to and, and to end up with a more blessed, protected, prosperous, good, healthy life. That's what we all yep. want, man. So hey, yep. we are at Christian.com. We are so so thankful for you, Doctor Jim Richards. Thank, no, thank you, you so much for taking your time again. Impact Ministries. If you want to uh, connect with them at all on any of these uh, materials. You will be greatly blessed, trust me. And until the next time from Christian.com, remember your best life starts here.